Good morning. The word of God is foolishness to those who are lost, and it is wisdom to the saved. I pray that for you, it's wisdom today as you listen to Jesus' words from some high place in Galilee when he gave the Great Commission. So I'll start with telling you just a little, little family story. Our grandson, Wyatt, came with us last Memorial Weekend, just last, son, last seven days ago, to Camp Shiloh, our camp that our district has. And about halfway through the weekend, I caught on to this because I'm a little slow. His dad would say, go get the sheet and check it off the list. And I said, wait, 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 what's, what's this get the sheet and check it off the list? And he said, oh, well, Wyatt made a bucket list for the weekend. And uh, he wants to make sure that it's not a wasted vacation with the rest of us. So he had goals for what he wanted to accomplish. And I asked this week because I knew it was, I was going to share it with you for the sermon that what was in the list. It's, it's kind of cute. Number one, jump off the big diving board down at the swimming part of the camp, okay? Number two, find a clam. His dad is studying clams as part of his doctorate, so I don't know, it must be rubbing off on him. Number three, catch a fish. We did catch 48 crappie over two nights. Make some food. He loves to cook with his mom and his grandpa on the other side. Uh, make some food. He did get to help uh, blacken fish with his uncle. Eat a s'more. Yeah. <laughs> he, got, he got to do that too. Kick a double in kickball. Never happened because none of, none of us were getting out of the lawn chair to go play kickball with him. We should have, but we didn't. Kick a double in kickball. That's what he said. Get a baby bunco if we play bunco. <laughs> we didn't play bunco. We played uh, phase 10. So win a game of cornhole. Well, we forgot to bring the cornhole set. <laughs> and then get a point in volleyball. I guess when you're about three foot nine, you think, if I can get just one point. I think he got more because they just played two on two, and, and, the, and uh, he was able to play with his uncles that way. So that, that was his bucket list. There were nine things on it. Bucket list. You uh, know the movie that was, had, bears that title? I think it's why, why you, anybody hear the, hear the movie? Raise your hand if you have so I can see if I'm way off. So Jack Nicholson and Morgan Freeman, uh, they both meet each other in the cancer ward, so to speak. They find out they have terminal cancer. Morgan Freeman has a rich personal life, but not rich in money. Jack Nicholson has a poor personal life, and he's rich in money, and they put themselves together, and they go, and they decide what they're the 10 or, 10 or so things that they want to do before they die. They wanted to l not let cancer take away their purpose. And they thought, if we're really going to live, you know, in Hollywood's words aren't a preacher's words, but if we're really going to live with purpose, we're going we're gonna to chase after the bucket list in the rest of the movie, you know, right? I think that's where Wyatt, he maybe didn't see the movie, but it's where he, it, it got into our culture that this a list of things you want to accomplish before your life is over or the weekend is over is a bucket list, right? Did you know that Jesus, in the 40 days between resurrection and ascension had a bucket list. You can see it. Remember how he rose from the dead and, and the women gathered around him? And, and they want to just worship him and be glad he's alive. And he says, you go and tell my disciples that I'm alive and tell them I'll meet them in where? In Galilee. Well, he met them that night in the closed room and he walked on the road to Emmaus and he had a, a purpose for that too. And if you look at all the resurrection appearances of Jesus Christ, you can see his bucket list. Number one, make sure they know that I'm alive, that I have conquered sin and death. Make sure. So what, when in Luke's gospel, resurrection, he ate fish in front of them, right? Maybe it was like Wyatt's fish, I don't know. Secondly, make sure that they know the real gospel. It says in Luke's gospel that he sat down and opened the scriptures to them and said it's about repentance and forgiveness of sins. All people are sinners and accountable to God, and I've wiped all that out, and now you're welcome into God's favor because of me and my 33-year life and my terrible uh, death and resurrection. It's done. It is finished. And he made sure they got it because they were of Jews. They were all about an earthly kingdom, right? So make sure they knew I'm alive. Make sure they know the meaning of the great news, the gospel. Secondly, I mean thirdly, reinstate them. Remember, they had a lot of guilt because they abandoned him. Peter denied him. 
So he's filled with grace and mercy and gives him a big catch of fish again in John 21, right? And do you love me three times like Peter denied him three times? He makes sure that they know he forgives them. He still accepts them because he is the unconditional Savior, right? And finally, bucket list number four, make sure they're going to continue to live the great mission that he had given them, to live that life of purpose. In John 21, resurrection appearance, Peter says, I'm going fishing. The fishermen guys in the group said, we're going with you. They didn't catch anything all night because Jesus wouldn't let them. They didn't know it. Then he's on the shore and he lets him catch a great catch of fish. And then he says, feed my sheep, tend my lambs, feed my lambs, take care. If you love me, you can fish for fun. You can fish for money. You can't live for fishing and for fun or fishing for money. While you do that, you live on mission for me. You feed my lambs, you tend my sheep, you, you take care of my people. This gospel thing is getting started. I don't need you guys getting distracted, right? That's all around the Sea of Galilee. Remember, I'm going to meet them in Galilee. And then he takes them to a high place in Galilee. This isn't where he ascends. He ascends from where? The Mount of Olives down by Jerusalem, 75 miles away. But he takes them to a high place. Why? He wants to, he wants to help them see the epic nature of the bucket list that he has for them the, in his bucket list there's that when i we got to go to israel this spring very first time we're, we're along the southern and southwest corner of the sea of galilee and the the guide says you see that high ridge up there the, most people call that the mountain of the great commission he said we don't know for sure but it was in this area galilee right it's one of the highest mountains around the sea itself and he said it could have been so just for a moment if, if you imagine Jesus, uh, time out. Never mind. I had something else I was going to do at the beginning with your bucket list, but I got to move on. Okay, so Jesus is on that high spot, and he's, he's looking out over Galilee. And what has happened the last three years there? If they're standing there with him, the 12, of course, you know, Judas is gone. They haven't added Matthias, so the eleven. They, they're seeing the sea where he walked on water. They're seeing the shoreline up there on the west side where he fed 5,000 and fed 4,000. And they're seeing the west, the east coast where the Gadarene was possessed by demons and pigs ran into the wall. You know, they're seeing all that. They're seeing right down below Magdala and Mary Magdalene is on their mind. And they're, all this is a ministry that happened, this life they had with Jesus. And then he says these words, okay? So I'll, let's get to that. Let's read it. It's going to be on two slides. It's on page eight. It's the Great Commission, but I want you to see it in its context. I'll read it to you. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. We don't know which mountain it was. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The entire text wouldn't fit on the slides, but it fits here. And I just want to show you verse 18 and the last verse 20 are like the bread of a sandwich. I, all authority has been given to me and I am with you always. The guy in charge of the universe, when I preached two weeks ago, for the good of the church, he rules all things for the good of the church. He's in charge. All authority has been given to me, top part of the sandwich. Bottom part, the guy in charge is with you always. That's both law and gospel. It's law that the guy in charge is right with you. You're not ever living your life alone for your own purposes, right? The thing I was going to have you do that I just simply forgot was to make your own bucket list real quick for the end of your life, from now until the end. On mine, things like I, Mary and I would like to see Tuscany, Italy. Another one for me, but not necessarily on Mary's mind, is finish the kitchen for Myrna at, <laughs> at the church. Because <laughs> it's been going on forever, and it's my fault, right? Another one would be wash my truck weekly like Gary Franke washes his car. 
weekly, right? Learn how to do that, right? You, what's your bucket list, though? You got some, right? I'd like to at least visit this place or at least do this thing or at least uh, see this happen, right? Like Wyatt is talking about on our thing. So I was going to have you do that. Now you did it. What's yours? Have it in mind. Okay. Now the Lord of the universe who's in charge of all things and who's with you always to the very end of the age is looking at you, looking at that bucket list with you. And he's, he loves you. He gave you this life on earth. He, he gives you good things. So there's a lot of fun and innocuous things like going fishing or going to Tuscany that are perfectly within his desire to bless you. But here's the question that this story begs. Without my prompting or without being in church, have you put or would you put on a bucket list if somebody just asked you out of the blue, what's your bucket list? Things about making disciples? Is it just about the car and the kitchen and Italy? Because that's just fishing. Right? Was the great commission from that mountaintop just for those guys? Oh, no. It's for all Christians, right? This is God who made me. This is God who died for me. This is God who keeps me alive today and has blessed me in so many ways so I can be here with you. What, what does he want from me? He wants me to have on my bucket list making disciples. And what is making disciples for Jesus? Well, he says so in the Great Commission. We do focus a lot on the, the imperative, go make disciples. But actually, he, the, the means by which he says to do that is the beautiful gospel. Go make disciples by what? Baptizing them. When you look in the book of Acts and these 12 ha carried out their lives of Baptizing, what always came before baptism? Teaching the gospel to people. Baptism is a very real seal and sign and power from God that adopts you into the family. But when you're talking with people in a crowd like they were or a stranger or somebody who doesn't know Jesus, you teach them about the grace of God and then you say you can be absolutely sure that he included you by being baptized. And that forgiveness I'm telling you about is applied to you individually in baptism itself. In the name of a father who created all things and watches over, who gave his son, who willingly gave up his life and earned the father's favor, even though he already had it. And a spirit that brings this throughout the whole world. In the name, baptize them in the name of the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to what? If you look in your translation, it says obey. There's a word for obey. This isn't it. Translators make choices. They have their reasons. I don't like this choice. This is an NIV choice. The word here that is, is, is to guard or keep watch or observe or treasure, right? What's the thing you value the most? I mean a thing, actually. You know where it is? Do you know where it is in your garage? in your house, right? I remember growing up, uh, my mom and dad raised six kids, so our garage was always full of bicycles and other stuff. And we'd have a clean out day and all that. And dad would get all frustrated because we kids had junked it up again. The, in the whole time I was growing up, we never had a car in the garage. And one of my brothers, I went to his house to see him you know, a few years after he grew up and his car was in the garage. And he goes, we grew up the opposite, but he said, I'm not going to put my $30,000 car in the driveway and put my $3,000 worth of junk in the garage. And I thought, man, why didn't I think of that? My brother had this, right? What's your valuable thing? What's in the garage? Right? That's what Jesus said. Teach them to what? Teach them to treasure, watch over, guard everything I've what? The word commanded, again, translation choice. It's, there is a word for just command. This isn't it. This word is to hand down. So it's both law and gospel. It's like the, the word Torah in the Old Testament. It means all the stories of the gospel that are there in Genesis. 
right? It's, uh, it's the things, teach them to treasure everything I've handed down to you. Well, Jesus handed down law and gospel. Beautiful, both, right? And so he's saying to them, you want to go make disciples? Teach them the good news that I'm their Savior. Baptize them so that they know that they're included and their identity is secure. And then teach them to treasure my words. See how that fits? Now let me go back to your bucket list. Forget guilt about what you didn't put on there. Let's talk about what you're putting on there right now. You're standing on that mountain with Jesus. He, through this word, you are with Jesus on that mountain. You have some life left in you. The whole landscape of what happened in Galilee is in your Bible in the New Testament. You know all about it. You know that it includes you. You've been baptized. You're saved. What's on your bucket list for making disciples? Supporting the church with your prayers and your friendship and your encouragement. Teaching voluntarily or as an occupation. Picking up a project at, at your church of believers and working together with us on something like greeting visitors, cards sent to people, prayers said, witnessing, leading a Bible study, being at a Bible study, inviting someone to a Bible study, challenging someone who's wayward, pulling them back in. Hey, I'm back. There's a thousand ways. Write a book, right? Host, host something for Jesus, right? Like Matthew did, the tax collector's party. What is it? What is on your bucket list? What fits you? What is it? What are they? It's more than one thing. What's your list? What do you want to get into to do for Jesus? You're already doing some of it. Maybe what's new, right? And I look around. I see your faces. I, I know a lot of you have your list, and you've been practicing just fine, right? I'm not, telling, I'm not preaching at you like you don't do anything. I'm just saying, even though this is the core, really, in a church on a Sunday morning in June, there's, this is still the call of God for all of us to, to do the list and, and, and do it with joy with our Savior. Um, okay, Seth, would you stand up? This is Seth Marquardt. He is uh, living with Mary and me. He came on Monday, just showed up. He's off the homeless, off the street. I never seen him. No, <laughs> he's not. He's a student at our college, MLC. And I wanted you to meet him. And I asked his permission on the way down here. What's he going to say? No. Can I make you stand up in the sermon? But uh, he's, he's uh, living on mission. What's he doing? He wants to be a pastor. I said, Seth, when you, what made you want to do it? He said, a mission trip, a youth mission trip that I was on in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I remember and that's when I said, yeah, I'm going to study to be a pastor in the ministry. He's, he's here to help us reach out to Gerald. And so he's, he's uh, uh, doing what Caleb Steinke did last summer. Caleb Steinke's our member that is at MLC, right? But he's, he's, on, he's doing this bucket list for Jesus. He didn't know it was a bucket list. But, um, we have kids on a mission trip right now. They're out there in Arizona. They're going to start their VBS. Chad and Cindy got them, and a few other leaders have them. And they're out there, and there's probably 15-ish of them. And some of you parents know more how many there are. But there, there, did you know that, you can sit down now, Seth, yeah. Did you know, <laughs> did, did you know that we've had more kids decide to be more dedicated in the mission of Christ and some even be a, studying for ministry <clears throat> because of that mission trip than any other thing I could name as a pastor? They'll come back and go, I, I think I want to do ministry this way or that way. And, and it's a simple mission trip of doing vacation Bible school in an underprivileged area. In the doing, we actually learn, right, about the joy and the satisfaction of doing the greatest thing that anyone can do on earth. Now, this is huge because the world's telling you the greatest thing you could do is like win the gold medal, make a lot of money, right, win a beauty pageant, <laughs> all that, get a degree or the third degree. Whatever, right? The greatest thing that anyone could do on earth, according to Jesus Christ, who's the authority that created all things, and he's with you right now, is to make disciples. Making them, 
growing them while they're disciples, helping them make it safely to heaven. It's the greatest thing any Christian can do, and any Christian does it wherever they are in their vocation in life. Doctor, lawyer, professor, pilot, pastor, doesn't matter. We're all, the greatest thing we can do is make disciples. That's Jesus talking to us, right? The Word of God is living and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing to the joints and marrow, dividing them. I was going to have more people stand up. I even asked a couple people. And then I stood back there and looked, and it would be like almost all of you that are here. Right? If I'd be fair. Because I know you're all doing stuff on your bucket list and making disciples in some way. That's a beautiful thing. On Tuesday this last week, Thursday, Thursday this last week, I was at Temple, Texas. Their, their pastor is going to Colorado, so we had what we call a pre-call meeting. And I recognized, because I've been around a while, I recognized there were 15 people there, about eight of them. But of the group that I did not recognize, a, a woman caught me at the door. Some of the people I do know were standing with her. And she said, I, I just want to tell you who I am. My name is Linda. Did you put that picture of Linda on the, on the screen? I made her take a pic selfie with me, and that's Linda. She said, Pastor, this Sunday, today would be, I'm getting baptized. I'm so, she goes like this, I'm so excited. I'm getting baptized. I said, you got to tell me, how does a woman, and I hate to say it, your age, get baptized this Sunday? She said, there's a guy that wasn't here tonight. His name is Stephen. She said, he is a confrontational man, I'll tell you. She said, we live in the same apartment complex. I was walking my little dog outside. He's seen me there a couple different times and said nice things. But the, he came up to me one day and he asked me, do you have a home church? Just out of the blue. He goes, he's in my face. He was in my space. He goes, do you have a church? And she said, I've been Buddhist for 22 years. I have a shrine in my apartment. And she said, he was rude. He said, that's not going to do anything for you. You need to know Jesus. And he said, if you don't have Jesus, you're, you're, you're not going to make it to heaven. And she said, I don't, you know, have a good day, sir, is what she told me. She said, and he said, I am going to have a good day, but you're not if you don't know Jesus. And she said, you know what he did? He started coming to my apartment. The next day, he just knocked at the door. He had a big old Bible, she said, in his hand. And he asked if he could read it to me. And she said, I, I'm bored. I'm, come on in. <laughs> Let him read the Bible. She said he did it for weeks. He'd come over, I'd let him, and he'd read the Bible. And she said, he read sometimes for th two or three hours. I thought, man, you are bored in your retirement. <laughs> right? But she said, the more he read, the more I saw that Jesus was in all of the stories somehow connected in Old Testament and New. She goes, it's all about Jesus. And it's all about God's doing it for me and not me doing it for myself and my mysticism and my Buddhism. And then she went on to say, you know, I have Christian experience before. I was involved in a... Episcopal Church, she said, my husband and me, my first husband, we raised our kids Mormon. And he said, so we did Mormon. She said, I did Episcopal. And then I did 22 years of Buddhism. And she said, one day we're sitting there and he finally got the nerve and he said, what is that over there in the corner? She goes, that's my Buddhist shrine. She goes, I've spent a lot of money on that. It's got really nice wood and nice... He goes, you better get out of your house. And she said, he's just that way. And, I, and she said, you know what? He kept telling me that day after day, and finally she said, I threw it all away, and I didn't feel any remorse. And she said, I'm so excited to get baptized for the forgiveness and salvation and the, be, be part of the faith. And I was thinking to myself, what a great way to finish the sermon on Sunday. <laughs> huh? Stephen, living on mission, part of his bucket list? Probably with all kinds of social warts. I don't know, Stephen. Shared the love of Jesus the best he could because it was on his bucket list. And here's a woman who just about 45 minutes ago was baptized in Jesus' name. Stephen must be really having a cool life, right? If that's on his bucket list, and it was, think of the fulfillment and joy no matter what earthly bucket list he's able to check off, he maybe didn't get to play bunco, but he got to see a soul saved. Do you hear, dear people, what I'm saying? You know what you're there for is? Go and make disciples.
then you'll really live. Amen. Amen.